ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the award-winning sports writer, though that kind of limits it a little bit, I think, Jim McGuinness with his book, Until Victory Always. Jim, I want to start by running a quote by you where you said, we hold back even though the most exhilarating and liberating thing you can do in your life is to just put yourself out there. Does this ring even truer for you now, do you think, with the success and the reaction that you've got to this autobiography? Um, I think that regardless whether I was successful tonight or not, um, I'm really happy with the book. Yeah. Uh, the, the book actually took me on a journey, a personal journey, which... Mm -hmm. I didn't foresee it at the outset, to be honest with you. Um, I started the process of writing the book and quickly realised that, well, it wasn't happening for, for a start. And um, it made me reevaluate what it was all about and where I was coming from myself as a person and what was driving me as a person. Um, and the book then became something very, very different. So at the, at the end of that process, um, I knew a lot more about myself mm -hmm. and we created something that I'm really, really happy with. So whether, whether uh, it's great to be here tonight, sure. but it's, it's, it's We're fantastic. Delighted to have you. Del and delighted to win it. But whether, whether I did or I didn't, I think the process of going through writing the book and for myself personally and for my family, it's been, it's been really good. And I think it's moved everybody on a wee bit and it's helped everybody. Um, and it's given me the opportunity to acknowledge the players and people that were very close to me that, that made the whole thing happen. So I'm really happy with that. There are so many excellent sporting biographies out there where, you know, athletes and different sports people bring us into the heart of the game and what it means for mm. them. Was that something that drove you? Were you trying to explain why you'd been so passionate about this sport for so long? Um, what I wanted to try and do, because I, I read a lot of sports bios myself uh, in, in terms of managers. I don't read players that much, to be honest with you, because I want to try and... Mm -hmm move myself forward in my own development but I do read most managers and um, what, what, I, what, what I tried to do was just give people behind the scenes, give the fly in the wall, this is, this is what it's about and I think that our own Gaelic games, it's our national sport, everybody watches it but I don't think that people fully understand mm -hmm. what is exactly involved in it and the levels that are involved in it at the moment if you want to be successful or if you're trying to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, we were trying to compete with the top teams in the country on a minimum budget, and that's a difficult thing to do in the current, in the current um, climate. So all these things were, I suppose, rushing about in my head. But what I wanted more than anything was the authenticity of the story and also to the journey of the football team to be reflected. That was the two things that I really wanted. And then the personal stuff came out <coughs> in the process, which I didn't foresee. You said that it wasn't happening for you when you first sat down to maybe mm. start the book. Do you think it was that personal story, and particularly the stories maybe about your two brothers who had such horrendously sad deaths, do you think mm. that was the stumbling block for you? You didn't know how to write it? I think that's probably fair, mm. and I didn't realise that at the time. Mm. But when I reflected on everything um, and retraced and went back over all my memories, then I sort of got a picture in my own mind that these are the things, mm -hmm. these are the things that are important and these are the things that matter to me. Um, and people would have said, since the book has come out, you know, they, they're, they're the things that shaped you. I, I wasn't thinking like that at the time and I wasn't thinking that during the book, but now at the end of the process, I think that's probably a fair, a fair comment. Um, and I'm happy about that because there are people that were very, very close to me. Mm -hmm and I love them very, very much. And uh, I think the book keeps their memory alive. And um, I think that's, that can only be a positive thing. Talk to me then about the relationship with Keith Duggan, who goes throughout the book with you. Hmm. You must have got to know each other very well. I yeah. imagine you'd some rouse, maybe some spirited no, no, moments along the way, or were no, there, no? No, there wasn't really. No, really? Was, no, no. Because that's unusual, because that's a very intimate collaboration. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, no, nothing really. You were just in charge. No, 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 and that's definitely not the truth. Uh, really? He, but he, the relationship's there for a long, long time. Okay, before th this, you've I known him for a I long time. I think the first, he, he, Keith might have done a major sort of like a two-page two spread in the, in the Irish Times 
20 years ago and then maybe one every couple of years uh, in the in-between. So we had that relationship uh, and he's a person that I trusted. And he's from Donegal, so he got the Donegal story and he got the context and he was that supporter in Crow Park with us yeah. on a lot of them evenings. Um, so he understood where we were and where we came from and what we were trying to do. And, and he understood me because he, probably better than myself maybe in some respects, because he was able to be objective and still write about me. And, and then once you do an interview and you're a football player, you never read it, you just keep on going. Whereas the writer will have the, the detail on you. So, um, so we know each other for a long time. But also, when you do a piece for a newspaper, in a way it's disposable. But with this, this is permanent. This is your final version of those stories in those years. Was that daunting for you? Is that maybe what was part of the challenge for you? No, I don't think so. No, I think it, the process of doing it has been a very, very positive one. I think one of the driving forces behind it was my own children, actually. I've got five young kids, eight, six, four, and the twins are two. And I think that if... If I didn't do the story now, I don't know if it would be that relevant in five years' time or ten years' time or twenty years' time. So it's there now and it's there for them and maybe in ten years or fifteen years when they're twenty years, when they're old enough and they've got a bit of sense because there's definitely no sense in the house at the moment. <laughs> um, I think they might be able to pick it up and they'll know something about their uncles, they'll know something about their family, they'll know something about their father and the journey. They're on that journey with us but they're just tiny, tiny children on that journey so it's it's nice for them as well. Excellent. Jim McGuinness, huge congratulations. What an achievement. Well done. Thank you.